Building up to this all day, all week, in fact, all year, Enable could be about to make history. Here's the final chapter of her story. Oh, racing away, soft light is the slowest one of them. To break into stride, 2,400 metres, a mile and a half in front of them. Nagano girl quickly drops to the back of the field as Fearmont with a red cap is the first to show. Blast one piece in second position. Sotsas is running in third. Gayath around the outside, then Magical. French King is next. Enable comes next. She's just head of Kiseki, two lengths away to Japan. And quite a gap then, three or four lengths further back to soft light. And the Garno Gold is at the rear of the field. They begin to settle down. Gayaf in the blue colours. He was a bit warm beforehand. And he's moved through to show out in front. Fiermont Christophe Lemaire, the red cap against the running rail. Next to him is Donica O'Brien on Magical with the white cap. And then Frankie on Enable. She's about three off the running rail. Just moving ahead of Sotsas and Christian Demurio in the green colours. Blast one piece of Light blue jacket comes next as they run right up now towards the top of the hill. Volkgeist and Kiseki own company with Japan. French King behind those. Little gap then to the red and white of soft light. And another gap to Nagano Gold at the rear. So downhill now they head up down to the home straight. They're well strung out. Enable is in fourth place. The leading trio getting away. It is Gayaf in blue leading. Magical, the white cap, a length and a half behind in second place. Then Fearmond in third. There'll be about three lengths to enable. She holds fourth at the moment from Sotsas and then Blast One Piece. The red of Voltgeist around the outside of Kiseki. Japan is behind those as they run down the full straight now, well on their way to home. Japan three or four from the back of the field and then French King, Soft Light and the Garno Goal. But Gayath will lead them to the home turn. They have only only 600 meters to go. Magical in second. Enable. She's now poised. She's in third position. Sotsas is next. Japan is trying to make progress down the outside. Volkgeist is next. But now Magical. White cap goes on. Enable in second place. She's two lengths behind. 400 meters to go. Here's Japan and also Sotsas with their challenges. Volkgeist behind those. But 300 meters to go. Enable has the lead. Sotsas in the green colors in second. Volkgeist the red down the outside they're coming to the last furlong now and it's enable in front she leads Volkgeist in second place is closing down the center Volkgeist in the red jacket is getting up he's won Pierre-Charles Boudot was one of Volkgeist beats enable Sotsas was next then Japan magical soft light Kiseki Nagano gold French king Gayath then blast one piece and Fearmont is next well it wasn't to be I'm afraid but it is a V for Volkgeist Pierre Charles Boudot on board. Number two has won the Qatar Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, getting through in the closing stages. That might even be a surprise to the jockey who thought the ground might be a bit too soft for him. Well, it's set. That is an eighth Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe for Andre Farb. Volgeis, who couldn't beat Enable last year, stays on strongly under Pierre Charles Boudot to deny us the fairy tale finish. You could hear a pin drop, Jamie. Remarkable. The closing stages, the fact that Enable struck the front, the fact that she'd read the script, the fact that she followed it, but one horse who didn't follow it was Volgeis. He's gone up against Enable three times in the past, never got near her on any occasion, but today, the different gallop, the different ground, he's come to the party and has proved the party pooper. Yep, he's now a four-time Group 1 winner. Laurent, are you surprised? I'm surprised like everyone, yes, but as I said, he was going to be much better at Longchamp to expect him to win by that margin, no. But the thing, he was floating going down to the start. I loved him in the ring. I, I told you with, between Gayat and, 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 uh, and uh, Valgeist, they both looked fantastic. There was something today about the horse. There was something, just watching him going down to the start, there was something about him today he was going to run a big race. To think he was going to be unable was hard to imagine, but, you know, it's just incredible, incredible. What um, do you make of it, nowhere. Jason? I could only say that Jamie was talking about the pedigrees earlier on. He's out of a Monson mare. That's a German pedigree mare. And, wow, that is just the biggest upset we have ever witnessed. And John Gosden staff congratulating the uh, the staff from, from the winning stable as well. And that's what this sport's all about as well. Yes, it's, um, but, you know, once again, you've got the master trainer, André Fab. don't forget, there is something about this man, 
when, when it was Earth Light in the middle, Parker Salam backing the, the man more than the horse, and once again, he's proved that he's, he's got that special fi thing, feeling with the horses. And I, and I knew the way he won the Prix Foix, very common, nothing, there was going to be a lot more coming from that, and that's what happened. He was just on his way up in the Prix Foix, and uh, what a performance. And to be fair, we talked about Prince Khalid Abdallah keeping a neighbor in training at the age of five. Voldgeist is also a five-year-old, and he's been kept in training. And goodness me, hasn't that just put a, a rubber stamp on his position now as a leading stallion for the future? And 2019 has been the year of the five-year-olds. Enable, Blue Point, Stradivarius, and now Voldgeist keeping these horses in training pays huge dividends. Well done to masterminding this defeat of Enable to Andre Fabre. Yeah, Andre Fab won the race in 2005 and 2006, but nothing since then. And an eighth Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, Jamie, just put that into some context. Yeah, it's such a pinnacle race. It's the most important prestigious race in the world. And so to win at once is a privilege, and to win at once is an achievement. So to have done so eight times is a measure of the man. The story will obviously be Enable's defeat. This is the cheer for Enable exactly. now. This is a cheer for the runner-up as she comes back into the paddock. Frankie riding around the paddock. Really emotional scenes. I don't know if you can hear that and pick that up from our microphones here, but the crowd acknowledging a superstar mare. And she may have been defeated, but she hasn't lost today, Jay. Well, you know, um, I keep going back. We talk about the pedigrees. I can talk about Lauren speaking earlier on that something, the, the, the lure of trying to win three arcs is put right up there as something that's unattainable. And Trevor's managed to go close. Enable has got even closer. But it still remains incredibly tough, held so high in the sporting arena. Yeah, it uh, tells you how much of a task and how much of a horse it would take now to, to, do, to achieve that. But uh, um, then again, it's um, in some way it's frustrating, but at the same time, it, you know, the way he won today, I mean, there was such as his third, as you can see, the main three to enable were French, probably not in that order, but still, you know, André Fab at, at home. Now, Fondgeist has won at 16 to 1, a 16 to 1 shot, but I don't think that that flatters him because I think he's got some form, Jamie, in the book there. I mean, that run at, at Ascot behind Enable and Crystal Ocean was very strong. I remember we had the sectionals finish the fastest out of the big three that day, which told you of some untapped stamina and a really interesting race regards tactics, and we'll discuss that shortly. Right.